So this is yet another uh, Let's Play Skyrim. So we're going to head up to Winterhold and take care of a few tasks there and in the uh, uh, immediate vicinity. <clears throat> So near the College of Winterhold are two quests that we're going to start, but also not uh, make much progress on. Need a ride? Where do you want to go? Climb and back, and we'll be off. It's almost getting downright hot now. One of which is uh, we're going to visit a shrine to uh, the... Um, I think she's a Daedric Prince, uh, Azura. And uh, she has a neat quest relating to enchantments that we're going to start. And then a little bit north of there, uh, a little bit north of the College of Winterhold, uh, out in the Arctic ice, there is a deranged wizard that we're going to visit. So anyhow, this is Winterhold, and we are first going to... First, going to pop in here and talk to the Jarl uh, of uh, of Winterhold <clears throat> because he has a uh, quest that we should start. Starts the quest. Really the gods, it's true, isn't it? A dragon is attacked by a dragon. How could we have ended without such a beast? And oh, that is the wrong way. The college is this way. And I'm surprised that there are chickens wandering around because it's pretty cold. And up here is the entrance to the college. So she gave us um, the fear spell, and we are going to cast it on the ground behind her. Oh, I actually don't have enough. Uh, do I have any anything I could drink that would improve my mana enough? No, that is embarrassing. Okay, so I can't actually do this quest right now. So I will take care of the two other things and I will come back later. So let's see, what. how much do I need for the fear spell? 135 mana. And I have a max of 120 right now, so in two levels I'll be able to come back. Okay, well that is certainly doable and in the meantime I'll take care of the two other things that I need to do. Up here is a deranged wizard that I need to talk to. And uh, south of Winterhold... is... Uh, so the downside is that it's not entirely trivial to make it down safely, and if you slip and fall, you're gonna die. Or, unless you can manage to catch yourself part way down, in which case you're going to take a good amount of damage. Skyrim actually involves a fair amount of this type of, um, let's call it mountain climbing. OK, 
Okay, I think I've made it down. Good. So the college is up there. Where I want to be is just a good ways north of the college. So we're going to head into the water here. This is not the most exciting uh, thing to do. But a lot of your time in Skyrim is going to be spent uh, heading someplace uh, to the fir uh, for the first time so that you can later visit, uh, visit it through fast travel. So if you're actually going to one place and there's another place along the way that you can visit with little risk and little uh, little inconvenience, you should probably do it because you're probably going to need to visit that other place at some point and you'll save yourself time overall. This is Nernroot. Nernroot is one of those objects that there'll be later on a quest to have a certain amount of it. There is a wal walrus-like creature called a horker. You will find it useful to have some of the ingredients that you can get from these guys. Unfortunately, at this level, they're pretty dangerous. But if you're careful, you can manage to grab a tusk and some arrows. But where I'm heading is actually the cave that's listed up above on my compass. And I would rather not stay around to fight that other world here. Uh, Horker at, uh, at the moment. So I'm assuming that uh, a magical compass is part of... Uh, is an inf uh, it's just one of those items that you have it that never was explained because it's implausible that you would have noticed this from way back there, particularly with like all this snow going on. So let's pop down here, visit the insane wizard, get his quest. So Blackreach is this really cool area that's deep, deep underground, but you have to hear about it from him and, uh, and get these items from him. But now that I have them, I can just wander back out again. How do I get up over here? Yeah, so there's basically two quests that you're going to want to do before you really start going deep into Dwemer Ruins. And this is one of them, so, uh, because without the items that he just gave you, you can't reach uh, the, uh, the special realm that's deep, deep under the ground. Let's do a fast travel back down to Winterhold so that we can uh, start the other quest. And we'll have to travel back to the college when we've gained two levels and have enough magic to, uh, to cast that spell. Now I think we can actually put on our map where we're about to go by talking to, uh, to a guy who's been living in the inn here. A lot of the people in... Here, 
take a look at this. Oh, there's a bounty. Somebody ours men. Have you heard of Olympus Aratino? Have you seen the shrine of the Zerg? Uh -huh. They say the dark elves built it at Rift and Framework. People say there's someone in Rift and that can change or I'm afraid there's you can talk to most of the business we get is from folks here to visit. That's right. College of Interval, just north of town. Okay. So now we actually have on our map where we're going will make it a lot easier to find it. Let's take a quick look. So we're going to head down here, which is just about due south, but we're going to need to make a detour uh, in order to find a good path, because otherwise we're talking about climbing unclimbable mountains. I mean, theoretically, I could manage to hop up those. If I'm very careful, but it is such a pain in the butt. So, we're looking for a way up through those mountains. Really thick snow here. More snowberries. And... So this wolf is actually an ice wolf, and they're more dangerous than the other kind of wolves. wolves. Whoa, where'd he go? And he has me badly injured. I'm gonna use a potion of healing. Hopefully we actually haven't bitten off more than we can chew, because... Gotcha. Now we'll use magic to heal ourselves the rest of the way up. Okay, and we'll switch back to the hunting bow. Grab his pelt, which we'll later on be able to use to give us... Uh, be able to craft things with the leather that we can make from it. Is this a pass that we can make? Let's, let's give it a try. Yeah, it looks like it, but there is another wolf up there. Another ice wolf. That's not good. And we've caught a disease from it. That's not good. And we need to heal up a little bit more again. Unfortunately, yeah, having caught a disease, that's worrying because it hurts your stats. Hopefully we should be fine. You can cure disease by uh, visiting um, visiting shrines to one of the uh, deities in the game, and if you just pray at one of them, you'll get all healed up. For the meantime, we're going to keep on marching ahead and uh, head up to that temple there. that we can start this quest. This is a particularly dangerous quest, so we're not actually going to finish it. But... Just as a general guideline, starting as many quests as you can in Skyrim is a good idea. Because again, there are plenty of things to do in any given area, and if you don't want to be traveling all the time, you should try and solve uh, two or three quests in an area in one go. Um, it's a lot of work to make our way around to the path, but it should be somewhere around here. And you can see that that is actually a huge tastic statue up there. also have to hope that we're not going to find some wild critter that's going to kill us, because we are running pretty low on health potions, and if they're faster than we are, a sufficiently tough critter might uh, spell death. Let's see. Looks 
we can probably make it up here. There's probably an easier path somewhere. There we go. So, we're going to head up these stairs. with this NPC. Howdy. Azura has seen no coming, traveler. It was not curiosity, but fate that has led you here. Azura has given me the gift of foresight. I had a vision of you. So she is a Dunmar priest of uh, Azura. You have been chosen to be her ch You must go to a fortress. It, inside, you will it is cryptic, I know, but Azura's signs are never wrong. I believe okay. the fortress may refer to all the things it has been foretold. And so the Black Star is that quest. And that mage is actually the mage who we met before is who we were talking to. So let's go down and talk to him while we're in the area. And I believe he will tell us of a dungeon where we have to uh, have to actually go do something, and that's where we're gonna uh, where we're going to leave this quest for now. We could progress further in it at this point, but the final stages of the quest, where you actually get the reward, there. Um, oh, wait, that's just the entrance to the. The final stages are particularly dangerous, and you don't want to uh, commit to the f final stages of the quest until you're much higher level and can take uh, takes a, uh, a beating. Hey, my days at the college. Who sent you? Was it the college? You're working with the Daedra? Right. Now to just calm down. down. I'll tell you everything. What do you know about soldiers? They are the Azura Star. Some of us wanted to find out how. I was working. Malin wanted to... It drove him mad. Look, I don't care who asked you to find the star, but don't take it back to Azura. The Daedra are evil. They're the reason Malin went insane. So, Azura's star is a really useful artifact in the game. And... It acts as a soul gem. Except normally, when you use a soul gem, uh, it's used up and it disappears. It doesn't disappear and it can capture uh, souls of any size, uh, including human souls which are um, worth the most. So it will save you a lot of money um, over the long run. So let's see, what else do we have to do? So we have a lot of uh, options open to us at this point. I think probably the best thing to do with this uh, at this point is going to be to head up to High Hrothgar and talk to the Greybeards. So in order to do that, we're going to head down to Whiterun Stables, which are just outside of Whiterun, and walk around the mountain. And that will bring us to a town which uh, has the base of the path up uh, to uh, High Hrothgar. And hopefully along the way we'll level up enough that we'll be able to visit the College of Winterhold uh, soon and cast that spell to get in and join the college, because there are a lot of quests that are pretty nice uh, once we're able to join. So we're going to want to head east and then south. And we can visit some of these uh, these points on the map on our way, which will give us more targets to fast travel to. So yeah, early on in the game, you'll find uh, find yourself doing a lot of walking. Later on in the game, when you have more of the fast travel points uh, memorized, you'll find yourself uh, walking around a lot less. 
it'll just be fast traveling to places. Although you do have to be careful that you don't limit your um, don't limit yourself too much with the alchemy ingredients that you're picking up because you can't get everything you need uh, from dungeons. Of course, you can buy alchemy ingredients from alchemists, but uh, but they they don't sell everything. So just as a matter of discipline, you're probably going to want to keep on doing a reasonable amount of walking. And uh, I think this is the mountain chain that we're going to want to walk around so that we can find the path to the top of it. There's a cave up there somewhere. Whoa, what is going Oh, another wolf. Who's afraid of Virginia Wolf? Not me. Ooh. He's coming back. I guess he doesn't know what's good for him. Well, it's good for me. And if it's not good for him. And I'm not sure what these giant bones are. They might be mammoths. Uh, the world of Skyrim has a lot of creatures in it that are based off of creatures that are now extinct uh, on our, uh, in real life. So you'll find saber-toothed tigers, which are really pretty tough, and you're going to uh, generally run away from them unless you're very high level. Ooh, there's a bandit. Great. stuff to sell when we make it back to a town. Fortunately, we're not going to get that arrow back. And up there is another bandit who is firing arrows at us. Great. So these cutscenes are pretty cool. The downside is that occasionally they happen when you have another enemy attacking. And your character will just kind of stand there and look all nice and shiny and awesome as he's being uh, killed by somebody else. Death by cutscene is an amusing part of Skyrim. Okay. Sweet. And eventually you're going to get pretty good at managing the minigame of, uh, of unlocking there. Let's see, was there another guy? Yeah. We'll loot him. Shovels are not particularly useful. More stuff. Sweet. Yeah, we're not even close to full, so we're just going to grab everything. And because we're just heading to another town, there's no need to be too picky. And let's see where we are. Yeah, we're up here. So we have... We basically just have a nice long walk around the mountain. Is that something down there? Well, maybe it is, but not something we can grab. So keep on going. Now, roads are, uh, are a fun part in Skyrim because you'll of often see people walking by that you can interact with. Or dead bodies. So you get sneak experience if you hit an enemy while you're sneaking. My sneak skill is very low, otherwise ducking back down might actually have uh, caused him to lose sight of where I am. Occasionally you get these cute little glitches in Skyrim, misplaced items that end up clipping. Now, because we haven't found anything else around here, and because either the cave or the standing stone is very near, we'll make a slight detour to learn it, in case we ever need to do anything else that's back in this area. Come on. Ah, ah, ah. Whoa. Oh, 
Unwrap skeletons is normally there, pretty weak. They are usually nuisances at best. about wizards is that they typically carry wizard robes and wizard robes are, are usually worth a lot for um, for their weight and at least at this level they carry useful enchantments that when you disenchantment uh, when you disenchant them you're going to want to learn those enchantments so that you can apply them to uh, things later on is some cotton and there is a lightning bug and you, you can catch them just like but oop hello shoot two wolves at the same time not good but that wolf ran off he will probably be back Wise to your ways, wolf. Yeah, butterfly wings are also useful in alchemy, so you should grab them when you can. Uh, or moths. We're going to continue southeast around the mountain. bow I'm using now. I get a nice one-hit kill on wolves. <clears throat> that looks like a giant camp. Giants are hilarious and very dangerous. They're hilarious because there's a quirk in the physics engine of, uh, of uh, Skyrim that when something is killed any remaining damage to it is converted to momentum. Okay, so we've learned this. We don't want to get any closer because if we do, they will come and hit us with their clubs. And uh, when you are hit with a club, you're going to go flying way up into the air. Actually, I think I'll show you what that looks like. Hey, dude, what is going on? Well, okay, he didn't do the uh, the blow that actually knocks you way up into the air. But if he does do a downward swing, that does incredible damage, and it will use uh, usually exhaust your health, and the remaining damage converted into momentum will just toss you way, way up. Uh, typically, you will go flying as if you were trying to go to space. our way around the giants, hopefully without provoking them. And grab some other cheese here if you like. And we're going to continue east. Did I end up learning Muffle? Yes, I did. Can I actually cast Muffle? No, I don't have the mana for it. Great. Because there are some, some spells where you really just want to keep on casting them as much as you can to gain experience in, uh, in the relevant magic school. And Muffle is one of them. It's kind of a trainer to help you uh, move towards being able to cast invisibility. Or at least that's the way I think of it. Um, hopping along. Are we getting close? Yeah, so our goal is pretty much straight south here. 
just have to hope that we don't run into any bandit camps or anything like that. So this is another good place to know about. We will be back there at some point. We still have to continue. Oh, actually, this is the right direction anyhow. So we will continue south. And that white marker up there, I believe, is the marker that we're running towards. Yep. So being uh, persistent with your jumping is really useful in Skyrim. And that it will save you a lot of boring running around. Oh, looks like I'm not going to scale that waterfall. Occasionally you have clipping issues. Up there is probably a bandit. down the waterfall. If I can go up the side here. Let's see, can I make it up here? I hope so. Maybe not. Okay. Let's see if I can make it around. Yes, good. Oh. Hello, wolf. another wolf around here probably or not okay so this is a path it doesn't quite take us where we want since we're really going for that marker up there I think this marker that's straight ahead is actually the top of High Hrothgar but it is not a very easy path to take and we kind of want to know Could be using our sword more. Let's see, is this? Yeah, this is the direction we want to go, but again, that is involves scaling the mountain. It's better to go around. Oh, this is a path that looks like it leads up the mountain. Or at least leads up to a pass. So you'll notice that my stamina depletes uh, when I'm running. It depletes less if I'm uh, if I'm wearing uh, less heavy armor, even if I'm carrying that armor on my back, which is kind of goofy. But as TV Trope said, that is an acceptable break from reality. Okay, run it up and up and up, and just have to hope I don't run into a bear or anything like that, because I'm not equipped to fight a bear at this point. Fortunately, the game is full of uh, these examples of, um, of gigantic uh, mountains that you need to climb that have these crisscrossy paths. For you to uh, head up. I think I hear another wolf. Hello. Let's take the pelt and I'll take the pelt. Where am I going now? More up. Kind of predictable. But looks like we're done with the. Uh, Crisscross paths. We getting close. Getting closer. And now that we're over the steep part, we should be able to take a more direct path to where we're going. Uh, it is a waterfall. I was worried that it was smoke from um, from bandits. It 
later on in the game, uh, bandits become very dangerous because they get some nicer bows and arrows. Oh, that is a troll. We are not ready to fight a troll at this point. Let's hope that he won't chase us. Is he still on our trail? No, that's good. Okay, we've made it away from the troll. And the music has calmed down. And this is a barrow on the edge of town. And this is the town. Here's some mushrooms for alchemy. And in the next Let's Play, we are going to... Somewhere around here there's a bridge that you cross over and... Ah, that's where it is. So you cross over this bridge and... And that's the way up. I'm just not ready to make the climb up. Passing through on your way to high home. Mostly food, so the graybeards tend not to get out much, if you catch my meaning. Well, it's kind of an understanding between us. Trouble is, my legs aren't what they used to be. Really? Well, that would be kind. Here, take this bag of supplies. At the top of the steps, you'll see the offering chest. Just leave the bag inside. So there's done. a quest that will give you a little reward when you make it to the top, which you kind of have to do anyhow. So that's, yeah, again, that's one of the things that you, uh, one of the points of the game. Uh, if you can achieve multiple goals at the same time, do it. And there's a cave over there, somewhere. Because it is so very nearby, as well. Oh, it's a bear. Never mind. So that'll be the end of this Let's Play. In the next Let's Play, I believe we will be heading up to the top of uh, High Hrothgar to visit the Greybeards.